this evening, Guyana opens first school for special education teachers. NCC opens new secretariat. Killer bees torment victims of kitty fire. In the region, Pope Francis accepts resignation over child sex abuse. And internationally, hundreds of migrants stranded after Italy refuses to allow ship to dock. From Safe TV headquarters in South Rival Gardens, this is Safe TV Headline News with George Gonzalez. Today is Monday, June 11, 2018. This edition of Headline News is now being streamed live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. This morning, 15-year-old champion cyclist Beyonce Ross died just after 2 a.m. at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Ross, a student of the Lower Quarantine Secondary School in Rose Hall, had won three gold medals at the National School Cycling Championships in October 2017. This weekend was a very contentious one for members of the Guyana Prison Service. George Gonzalez tells us more in this report. On Sunday, an inmate of the Camp Street Prison died at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Acting Director of Prisons Kevin Pilgrim explained that Sean Tom had been placed in a cell with three other prisoners after he had stabbed another inmate on May 25, 2018. The following day, Tom had been discovered in a semi-conscious state in the cell. Reports indicate that the police are investigating both the stabbing and what led to Tom being discovered in a semi-conscious state. Meanwhile, a prank has triggered an ongoing feud within the prison. Inmates throwing water on others through a vent escalated quickly with some of the prisoners arming themselves with improvised weapons. Authorities quickly took control of the situation that day. Then, on Monday morning, wardens of the Lusignan prison were put on high alert after foiling an attempt to smuggle contraband into the facility. Around 1 a.m., police and prison personnel manning the eastern towers of the prison heard crashing sounds emanating from the bushes and shortly after observed the male wearing a hoodie emerging. The guards fired a warning shot at the man, causing him to flee back into the thick vegetation. The male was not caught, but three bags containing the following items were found and lodged. 141 packets of cigarettes, four cellular phones, 11 lighters, one power pack, one earpiece, one phone charger, 15 packets of small-sized Ziploc bags, and 1,794 grams of cannabis. This comes just weeks after Director of Prisons Gladwin Samuels promised stiff penalties for persons, especially wardens, caught smuggling contraband into the nation's correctional facilities. Channel 2 Headline News, George Gonzalez. Thanks, George. One local businessman is nursing a gunshot wound after being robbed by two bandits around 9.30 last night. Two identifiable males, one armed with a handgun, robbed Leroy Robertson while he was resting inside of his wash bay in Charlestown. The armed suspect stole Robertson's cellular phone and a small amount of cash while his accomplice stood guard. Even though he did not put up a fight, the armed suspect shot Robertson once in his left knee before escaping. Prompt action by a rank on a motorcycle patrol led to the arrest of the armed suspect. A short distance from the scene, a 38 revolver with a spent shell was found in his possession. Police are currently looking for the accomplice. Robinson was taken to the hospital and is said to be in a stable condition. Investigations are ongoing. History has been made today as several persons graduated from the Caribbean's first school for teachers interested in special education. Wendell Jeffrey was at the ceremony and filed this report. This facility is slated to being the hub for the region and a beacon of the free. Today, the ministries of education and public health, with funding and support from the Republic of Cuba, launched the Center for Stimulation of the Development for Children, Adolescent, and Young People with Special Educational Needs Associated with Disabilities. Project Coordinator Jorge Ramirez said that this is the first outfit of its kind in the entire Caribbean and will help with training and evaluation for special needs teachers. The Caribbean country will now have a space in the regional center 
or train their teachers in evaluation and diagnosis of special needs, as well as in the general preparation of teachers in schools for the care for of all children. In his brief remarks, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education, Vibert Welch, noted that there are many studies that focus on the way the brain works and that this center will tap into these studies. He too noted that this learning center will be the hub for the region. Today is a momentous day as we celebrate the graduation of a new cadre of special education needs teachers, the very first. The development of education has benefited from new knowledge of the brain and its functions. As it is discovered how human beings learn, our thinking has been modified and so has the delivery of education. The Cuban ambassador to Guyana Narciso Sorcoro pledged that his countries will continue to support this educational project. I wish to convey a warm congratulations to the eight professionals who successfully completed their training for psychopedagogical diagnosis from the perspective of educational inclusion. It's correct. <laughs> I reaffirm the commitment of the government of Cuba to continue supporting the implementation of this important regional project. Minister of Education Nicolet Henry said that some 16% of Guyanese children suffer from some kind of academic challenge. The minister noted that this center will provide much needed training in this regard and on a broader front. As approximately just about 16% or so of our nation's children will have some sort of special education needs. It is encouraging to know that the Center for Stimulation facilitates training for the management of persons with disabilities, for not only teachers and social workers, but additionally training in the support and guidance of parents and family members of students with special needs as well. There were eight graduates of this inaugural training program. Today's entertainment was provided by students from the School for the Blind, the David Rose Special Needs School, and the Bishop High School. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, New Amsterdam Hospital considers 24-hour pharmacy service and Killer B torments Kitty Fire victims. But first, here's today's foreign currency exchange rate. For the latest in news from Guyana, the region, and beyond, visit our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. The Big King you love just chickened out. Introducing the new Chicken Big King with two crispy chicken patties and our signature king sauce. The new Chicken Big King, now part of our Burger King favorites. Only at Burger King, where taste is king.
you know, a tire telling you, stop thief electricity. Shh. Don't shush me. You're going to kill yourself and burn down people out. Stop her telling you. Stop. This man don't hear you, know. Hi, Yago. Look, I fed up with this stupidness, eh? I going to fix this one here once and for all. Hello, hello, GPL. Hey, now, I got a big problem wrong here. They got this chap who continuing to do it. All right, Skipper, you are under arrest for stealing the electricity. Are we going to live now? People, stealing electricity is dangerous to life and property, and it is also against the law. For the father that does everything, plus has to put up with you, you should get him only the best at Clarence. From the casual dad to the classic man, Clarence has everything. Sneakers, jeans, t-shirts, suits, shirts, from 25 to 50% off, shoes, belts, wallets, shades, and colognes at great discounts in store. This sale is for two days, June 15th and 16th. Have a happy Father's Day when you shop at Clarence on Church Street. Clarence, for quality clothing at affordable prices. Always keeping you in style. Welcome back. After two decades, the National Coordinating Coalition finally has a home. Wendell Jeffrey was at the ribbon cutting ceremony for the new facility and filed this report. The National Coordinating Coalition, the NCC, which is the entity which seeks to represent civil society organizations in Guyana, has a new home. For more than 20 years, the association has been working and coordinating NGOs while seeking to develop itself into a statutory organization. On Friday last, their dreams came through. Started with people who were passionate, yours truly included, more than 20 years ago. What we have been working to all these years is what culminates and hopefully continues in what we're sharing with you today. Simone Sills is the executive director of the new NCC Secretariat. Sills says that the National Coordinating Coalition has 38 members and she wishes that it serves as a model in other communities across Guyana. We are now 38 members. The intent is to use the services and this coalition is just a small dot in what has been happening. And we want to um, pinpoint, and we want to make this a model. Ms. Rohilda Glasgow of the Sophia Women's Group, who was very instrumental in the acquisition of the facility, welcomed the NCC organization into the Sophia community. We would like to see our youth off the corner. We would like to see our youth come into this building and learn something. Chairman of the NCC board, Mr. Alex Foster, told the gathering that history will remember this event favorably. Our presence here today is a part of a historical day because when the history of community development, the history of the NGO community is going to be recorded, Sophia will be mentioned to state that the first time a coordinating office for NGOs in Ghana was established, it was established in the capital city of Guyana in the Sophia. Council member of Sophia North, Andrea Marks, said a prayer just before the cutting of the ribbon. Father, I ask you for strength that we could continue to reach out for blessing in this community, O oh Lord. The USAID, Food for the Poor, and other organizations all contributed substantially in making the NCC Secretariat a success. Tokens of appreciation were presented by board member Maggie Lawrence to several of the local residents who worked tirelessly assisting in the opening of the center. The ribbon was cut by NCC's executive director, Simone Sills, and Jamil Davis, executive director of Food for the Poor. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey.
Thanks, Vandel. According to the Director of Economics Department at the Caribbean Development Bank, Dr. Justin Ram, CARICOM nations continue to suffer greatly due to brain drain. While addressing a regional stakeholder consultation session, Dr. Ram noted that the stark effects of immigration has had on the region. When we looked at the data, many of the countries in the region have lost as much as 70% of the labor force with more than 12 years of schooling. That is to say, 70% of our population that we have schooled to territory education has left our shores. Moreover, the CDB officials noted that unemployment rates in the Caribbean remains extremely high. In June 2017, the International Organization for Migration declared that, in 2007, the Caribbean immigration rate was four times higher than Latin America's overall immigration rate. Guyana has been named one of the countries with the highest immigration rates, with 9.65 per 1,000 person immigrating in 2013. Getting medication may soon become a lot easier for residents in Burbies. George Gonzalez tells us more about this new service at the New Amsterdam Regional Hospital. The Ministry of Public Health is determined to raise the standard of health care in the nation. With this in mind, the ministry has been meeting with the administrators of health centers throughout the country. The latest visit was to New Amsterdam Regional Hospital in East Berbice quarantine. The CEO of the hospital, Colin Bino, has suggested an obvious and yet revolutionary way to improve health care services in Region 6. Bino suggested to the minister within the Ministry of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummings, that the pharmacy at the New Amsterdam Regional Hospital should offer patients 24-hour service provided by the pharmacy. Bino indicated that to implement this new system, the hospital will need to hire at least four qualified pharmacists. However, he told the minister that there are very few trained pharmacists in the region. As such, the challenge would be to make the job attractive for prospective pharmacists saying, you have to ensure there is some control mechanism on all shifts, and we know that we can attract pharmacy assistants, but the problem is attracting qualified pharmacists. Also, again, it will come back to the matter of remuneration and looking at the packages. Thus far, the hospital administration is presently attempting to hire two qualified pharmacists from in the region. Once this move is completed, the hospital's pharmacy would be the first of its kind in the region to offer 24-hour service. The New Amsterdam Regional Hospital Pharmacy currently functions Mondays to Fridays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Channel 2 Headline News, George Gonzalez. Thanks, George. Earlier this year, several families in Kitty were left homeless after a fire ripped through their Pike Street homes. Now months later, one mother tells us that things for her family has gone from bad to worse. Esther Sobers has more. Several months ago, after fire ravaged four houses on Pike Street, Kitty, Georgetown, three houses were completely destroyed by fire, leaving several families seeking temporary shelter from neighbors, friends, and even a minister. Unfortunately for one family, their ordeal is far from over. Uh, we have a situation with these bees here, and I'm not getting any help. And the bees biting the children, it biting the dog, it, 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 it disturbing the neighborhood. And it's the same kind of beast kill somebody up East Coast, I was told. Since then, Demonok has been seeking assistance to remove the bees. She was given a letter by the Child Care and Protection Agency to take to the Ministry of Agriculture, but little has come from this so far. They said they don't do that no more. So I was asking around to get help for the bees, and a man, he said he's dealing with it since he was 10 years old, and there's a job he just do. But when he come and he see the bees, he say you have to get into the house to deal with the bees. And my stepsons who, who claim he's living here, which he's not living here, he's not allowing anybody to come in to deal with the bees. Why is that? He's not allowing the person. Well, I don't know. We have a matter in the court and maybe... It's, it's a, over who's the owner of this house? The owner of the house is Leonard Grip who died. Who's Leonard Grip to you? My, my um, common law husband with the children's father who passed away seven years now. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have a court matter going on, but I don't know, it's, it's a spiteful thing because 
he knows that the bees are there, but I don't know, he comes and goes and nothing is going on. So everything is stable as it is there. But I can't continue living like that. The bees are not new according to Deminok. They have been living in the house for almost six years with little to no problems. But that is all changed after the fire. According to her, since then the bees have multiplied and are causing havoc. Fearful for the safety of her three children, who are constantly attacked by the bees, the distraught mother expressed her frustration over the lack of attention given to her situation. Before the fire, they were dear. So when the fire come now, we thought they were dead, but then dead. So they... how are you living in a house with bees? How do you manage? Well, girl, I don't have anywhere else to live, and I got these children in this house. The father died and leave it for them. So where, where else am I going to go? If you would like to assist the Deminov family, they can be reached at telephone number 6715071 or you can contact us at Channel 2 Headline News or email us at safetyvheadlinenews at gmail.com. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Don't go away. After the break, Pope Francis accepts resignations from three Chilean bishops over child sex abuse and 629 migrants stranded after Italy refuses to allow ships to die. But first, here's this week's bridge retraction schedule. What are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL? You got time with GPL? I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time, every time. I recognize the value of your point, Mom. You were right. For the father that does everything, plus has to put up with you, you should get him only the best at Clarence. From the casual dad to the classic man, Clarence has everything. Sneakers, jeans, t-shirts, suits, shirts, from 25 to 50% off, shoes, Belts, wallets, shades, and colognes at great discounts in store. This sale is for two days, June 15th and 16th. Have a happy Father's Day when you shop at Clarence on Church Street. Clarence, for quality clothing at affordable prices. Always keeping you in style. Welcome back. Here's George Gonzalez with the regional and international headlines of the day. Pope Francis has accepted the resignation of three Chilean bishops in the wake of a child sexual abuse scandal. Bishop Juan Barros was accused of covering up sexual abuse committed by a priest in the 1980s and 90s. Pope Francis has said that he had made grave mistakes by originally defending Bishop Barros. All of Chile's 34 Roman Catholic bishops had offered their resignations, but the Pope only accepted three thus far. It was not clear if the move meant that the remaining 31 resignations would not be accepted. 
Rescue workers in Brazil have recovered seven bodies on the seashore near Rio de Janeiro's iconic Sugarloaf Mountain. The bodies were found near the scene of intense firefights on Friday between drug gangsters and Rio police. They clashed with gangs in the favelas on the hills overlooking Leme, a high-income neighborhood near Cabana Beach. After the armed gang members fled into the woods, they apparently went toward the Sugarloaf Shore area, where they were hunted by police in helicopters and on jet skis. Six rifles said to have belonged to the gang members were seized and shown to the media. And in international news, a rescue ship carrying 629 migrants is stranded in the Mediterranean after Italy's new interior minister refused permission for it to dock. Matteo Salvini, leader of the right-wing League Party, promised during Italy's recent general election to take a tough stance against migration. He says Malta should accept the Aquarius, but it refused, arguing that it falls under Italy's jurisdiction. Italy is the main entry for migrants crossing from North Africa to Europe. And finally, celebrity drooler Nirvad Modi is currently seeking political asylum in Britain following fraud allegations. The Indian jeweler went missing in February after accusations emerged of a $2 billion fraud at the Punjab National Bank. Indian police issued a warrant for the billionaire diamond trader's arrest. His stores in India were closed and assets seized by the courts. The success made him one of India's richest people with a personal wealth of $1.7 billion, according to Forbes. Stars such as Kate Winslet, Rosie Huntington-Whitley, and Naomi Watts have been seen wearing his products. Bollywood star Priyanka Chopra advertises the brand. Channel 2 Headline News. George Gonzalez. Thanks, George. Here's the weather for this week. to Headline News for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook and YouTube on our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. You can also tune in at 6.30 tomorrow morning for a rebroadcast and Tuesday evening at 7 for more news. For now, I am Bibi Baca signing out from your newscast saying thank you for welcoming us into your homes and do have a blessed evening. <laughs>